Hey everyone, I'm Daniel Mitchell, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to play the poor man's RPG card game, Hizop. This is a game I invented with my good friend Zach Renier when we had a lot of extra time on our hands, and I can honestly say it turned out pretty, pretty good, and I'd like to teach you guys how to play too. It's easy enough to set up, all you're going to need is a regular deck of playing cards and some dice. And of course, despite what it may look like in this video, you will need an actual person to play with, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I will be playing against myself. Alright, without further ado, let's play Hizop. Alright, to set up, first you need to separate the cards into face cards. As you can see, they've kind of already been sorted, and number cards. Alright, so this deck has already been sorted. So now you have two decks, your number card deck, and your face card deck. Be sure to shuffle them both. And, well, well, so I don't bend these cards, I'll just kind of do a cheesy shuffle here. And you deal four face cards to each player. And seven number cards. All right, you keep these decks on the side and the players reveal their four face cards. Now, if you've played RPGs, you know that this is your party. For those of you who don't play RPGs, these are basically your combatants. All right. Now that the cards are dealt, let's talk about what you do on your turns. So over here, you have your numbers deck. Over here, you have your face card deck. On a turn, you begin a turn by drawing a card from the numbers deck. Mm. Then you have the option to do one of four things. You can either assign number cards to your face cards, you can draw another card. You can initiate a random battle, which we'll talk about later. And, of course, the way you win the game is you can challenge your opponent. But we'll talk about that later too, since that is the only part that can get a little complex. Now you only get two moves per turn, so you have to use them wisely, and you can use them any of the ways I just showed you, by drawing a card, by assigning a number card, initiating a random battle, or challenging. But first, I want to talk about assigning number cards. Assigning number cards is the most common thing you will be doing during Hizop. <laughs> first, to begin my turn, I draw a card, and now I want to start assigning number cards. What number cards mean are possible numbers that can be rolled on the dice. That becomes relevant during challenges and random battles. But first, let's just talk about the process of assigning them. I can only assign same suit numbers to same suit face cards. So, say I want to give my queen this seven of hearts. And since I don't want her to get all the numbers, I might want to give this ten of diamonds to my ace. All this means is when I inevitably challenge someone, I have to select the champion. And depending on the amount of number cards I have attached to my character, that is the possibility I have of winning because we will be taking turns rolling dice 
And, well, since she only has a seven attached to her, I have one shot to roll seven. Didn't get it. To uh, beat my opponent. Then they have their shot to roll, depending on the numbers they have assigned to their card. And if they get one of the numbers assigned to their card, they beat me. But of course, we're taking turns back and forth, and it comes down to luck in the end. Now, you may be wondering, well, what happens if I don't have any, car <laughs> any number cards assigned to my characters? Well, this has happened before. All you do in the case of num say my king has no or this guy's king has no number cards all he gets the option of doing is guessing one number to roll so since he doesn't have any attached to it he might say well you have a seven i decide i want to roll an eight so every time he takes his turn he has to roll an eight to beat my queen Last but not least, let's talk about values. Each card has a certain amount of number cards they ha are allowed to have attached to them. Again, this is still in the same suit, but uh, a jack can only have two cards of the same suit attached in. A queen can have three cards of the same suit attached to him. And a king can have four cards of the same suit attached to him. And an ace can have a whopping five cards attached to it. What that means is, say I use an ace and I have five cards attached to him, of course, simple math, I am more likely to roll one of my five numbers than my opponent will be if they're using a queen with only three cards attached to her. Now that I've taught you how to assign number cards, let's talk about challenging. Challenging is the way you win the game, so it's pretty important to learn how and when to challenge. Say, well, say over the span of a few turns, I managed to get three cards attached to my ace. Now I technically can have five, but um, say I was unlucky and didn't draw any more diamonds than all I have for the purpose of this example. I have three cards attached. And let's see what my opponent has. <laughs> the only advantage to having a ghost player. I can look at his hand. Okay, let's see. Spades? Alright, he has the most spades. So, say, again. Over the span of a few turns, my opponent has managed to attach three spades to his king. Now, say I feel pretty confident and I want to challenge him. And challenging always ends your turn, by the way. That's an important thing to know. So if you have uh, two moves left, use your one move to either draw a card or assign a card, then challenge your opponent because that ends your turn. I want to challenge him, so I say, hey, I feel confident in my ace. My ace has three cards attached to it. I send in my champion and say, I challenge you. Now my opponent has one of two options. He can accept my challenge, which, which you know, if he has three cards attached to his king, he can say, hey, I feel pretty confident. I'll accept. If he accepts my challenge, he sends in his king. Because he accepted, he gets the roll first. And... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, oh, darn. So, alright. That means he got his number. That means my challenge was unsuccessful. My ace dies. Discard my ace. Discard my... Wrong side. <gasps> Discard my ace, discard my number cards. I only have three people left. His king was the victor. Now, let's pretend we can rewind time a little bit. And say, he said, you know what? 
I don't want to accept your challenge. Well, that's fair enough. I can't make him, but I have the option to try and make him by coercing him. So if I choose to coerce my opponent into fighting me, granted he didn't accept my challenge, I have to select my champion, and I have one shot to roll one of these numbers. If I get one of these numbers, he has no choice and has to face me, even though he refused. And because he refused and was a coward, I get to roll first. So, so obviously, a six. I did not get to coerce my opponent into fighting me. He's safe. But um, say I did roll one of the numbers, he would have no choice but to face me. So that's pretty much how challenging works. The way random battles work is pretty interesting. A random battle, if you've ever played Pokemon, is a way for you to acquire a new party member. So say, I don't want this Jack because he only can have two cards attached to him. And I want something a little bit heftier than that. So I can say for my turn, but this works just like challenging, uh, you initiating a random battle ends your turn. I can say, hey, I want a random battle. I take one card from the face card deck, an ace of spades. Now that is definitely something I want to switch out with. So now that I see the ace of spades, I choose a champion I want to fight. Now I can choose to just use my jack, and since he doesn't have any numbers attached to him, I guess a number for him, and if I roll it, I win. Um, that might be my best bet, because honestly, um, nothing's lost if I use him. But, say I really want the odds in my favor, I might use my ace with three cards attached to face him. Now here, this is where this gets interesting. Automatically, the random battle card gets the maximum number of cards they are allowed to have attached to them. And because I initiated the random battle, my opponent rolls for the random battler first. And if he rolls one of these numbers, five, woohoo, I got lucky, he missed. Um, but say he did roll one of those numbers, I lose the random battle, and my ace loses all his numbers. I don't lose my ace, but I lose all the numbers attached to him and have to discard them. Now, see, I got really lucky. He missed. And four. Oh, I rolled a four. So that means since I have a four, I win. I discard all the cards attached to the face card. And I can now choose which of my party members to switch out with that ace. Well, obviously, I do not want to lose my queens or my ace. So I am switching out my jack. My jack goes in the discard pile, I gain an ace, and now I have a pretty solid party. That's the way a random battle works. Now there's another case of random battling called the last resort random battle. Uh, because I don't want to picture myself in such a desperate scene. Say my opponent is down to one man. He's gonna say, well, I want to recruit someone. Well, since he only has one character left, he is allowed to initiate, and you can do this every time you have one character left, a last resort random battle, which means he can challenge another face card and if he wins the random battle, because it works just like the uh, regular random battle, he gains the king and doesn't have to switch anyone out. But uh, if he loses, like a regular random battle, he will lose all the number cards attached to his face card. So the only difference between a regular random battle and a last resort random battle is you don't have to switch anyone out, you are actually acquiring a second member, and you are only allowed to do that when you have one character left on the playing field. 
All right, so that's how you play Hizap. I hope you understood it. If not, I will try to answer any of the questions you post on the videos and or tasteful insults. And I hope you enjoyed the concept and enjoy playing the game.